Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And this is a part third of our tutorial series where we are going to understand how we can empower our AI agent with RAG. So if you have not yet watched my part one and part two, I would highly recommend you to watch part one and part two so that you can easily follow along with this part. But if you understand what is vector databases, what how the rack system works, then you can just follow along with this video also. So in this video, we are actually going to write the very first code where we're gonna understand how we can load the bunch of PDF file from one location to the vector database. So without further delay, let's get into the coding part, right? So I'm using a PyCharm as we have created this folder like rag underscore app underscore tutorial, you know, this, these are the dependencies which we have in, which we have installed. But, you know, uh, when I try to run some, uh, you know, code, I found that there are a few more dependencies, which are PyPDF, you know, TQDM. Uh, those two are also required to be installed along with this line chain community, right? So I can quickly show you that how you can do that. So this is PyQTDM, PyPDF, you know, and then similarly, you can just install Py Chain command. right? So once you have installed all these, you should be good along with the dependencies which we have installed in the previous part. So TQDM, PyPDF, and the LangChain community, okay? So what we're gonna do, we are going to write our very first program, which is going to load PDF, Data in Okay, so I'm just calling this name. So what I'm gonna cover in this, you know, so very first thing which we have to do is import the library as we always do for any Python code. And I have written, you know, some code so that we can just save some time. So these are the basic imports which we need. I, I can quickly walk you through with them, right? So these are OS, which is related to operating system time. So if you are coming from the Python background, you can understand all of them. This load uh, underscore dot ELB is just to use, just to load the environmental file. You know, this one is the pine cone where you see I come, I'm just, you know, importing a pine cone class in the serverless pack because we are going to use the serverless configuration, which is on a cloud. You know, if you want to just get the more detail about the pine cone DB, you can just watch, you know, my vector DB tutorial series where I have covered the pine cone related stuff in very great detail and you can just understand everything. You can get that link on your right top of your screen. Then we have just installed, you know, this document loader from a long chain community, long chain community, where we have these two classes where we are loading a directory and then we are using a PP, P, PDF loader to just load the PDF files. Then we have a text splitter as name suggests, we want to split the text and there are the class which says recursive character text splitter. You can use that and there is a very good documentation which I just capture if you really want to get into more detail about all these, you know, you can just come here and you can just understand all those kind of stuff. You can similarly search for the line chain community for all these classes and you can do that. And once you, once you, you know, uh, import these, you can always just go to the code as well. So for example, this is the recursive character text splitter, which is splitting text by recursively look at the inputs, right? So you can just understand each and every class which we have imported from these modules, right? So directory loader, right? So we can just understand what this directory loader is doing. So we can understand the code and we can just try to get, you know, the precise uh, logic. Similarly, other two which we gonna use is again LangChain Pinecone. This one is to integrate, you know, or allow LangChain to get connected with the Pinecone DB and we are using this Pinecone vector store. Again, you can just look at this. If you want, you can just get the great detail as well. And then the last one is, this is the embedding model with, with from the Google. Again, you can just look at this and there are a lot of, uh, you know, good uh, uh, models from Google, which you can use, right? So that, so here you can just go to this website and you can just find out what all embedding models Google is providing, right? Okay. So here are the three one and we are going to use this test embedding because we have to keep in a mind that whatever the index we are creating based on the dimension we define during a creation of index, we have to choose the same embedding model which can create the same dimension 
as a output when we feed our text because in what embedding does embedding actually convert our text into the list of numbers right we're gonna see that in action so once we have imported the required libraries then we need a logic to just load the environmental file so in a previous part as i mentioned that you know we have to create the dot env file i'm not gonna show you that you know but if you have created, if you have followed my previous video, you know how to create that EMB file. And these are the two keys which we have in that .env file. This is going to load that. And through OS model, we can just get the specific key value which we define in a .env file. And this is a very simple Python logic where we are seeing this file code is not a blank. It's set in our uh, EMB file. So it is just kind of a mechanism through which we are ensuring that we have a proper key set. Okay, now the next thing is what we want is we want to just configure, you know, like Pinecone DB where we want to give the information about the index and everything. And then we want to initial configure our embedding model, which embedding model we want to use. And there are some configuration related to line chain and our data. So you can see that because I have already written that in a very simple way. So I'm going to copy this as is, and then we can just talk about that real quick. So, right. So here we have a pinecone related configuration, the index name. This is the index name, which we're going to use. Then have a namespace. Again, if you want to understand these two configurations, you can just watch my vector tutorial to understand that. Dimension, metric, you know, cloud, and these are, these are the six parameters, you know, which I have explain in a great detail. Whenever you want to create an index, you need this. And whenever you want to interact with the data, like loading a data, getting a data, you need a names, right? These two cloud and reason, it's related to cloud. And this metric is just to provide you the way through which actually, you know, we can just query the data when we just look for extracting a data, right? So we talk about that, what all options we have in the map. Similarly, I mean, which text, more, which Google embedding model we're going to use. So this one is for that. Then PDF directory, which PDF directory we want. So we need a PDF underscore files. So here, what we have to do, we have to just create one directory and we can just call it PDF underscore files. Right. And then what we can do, we can just bring some bunch of, you know, so I have these two distributed a little bit. Okay, so let's copy them and see. And we have a bunch of open. So we have enough PDF files store. Okay, the next thing is, you know, uh, we as 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 you know, right? We have a content in our PDF. So what we need first, we want to extract that con. First, we have to load that PDF. Then we have to read the text and extract the text. And then we have to convert that complete text. You know into the chunk. Chunk means we wanted to just create a small, small sentence or a collection of sentences, which has some meaningful data because that is something which is going to return when we are going to look for retrieval, you know, that we're gonna understand, right? So chunk size means 300, right? So we are actually just going to have a 300 words and then we're gonna have a 50 words, which are going to be overlap with that. What it does mean? It means that if you have a two sequential chunk, the next sequential chunk, will have a first 50 words from the last chunk, right? And top K result is, okay, whenever you want to query the data, then top three similar, uh, you know, results should be written, which has the maximum similarity score. And we, want, we, we can just understand all those kinds of stuff. And if you will watch my Water DB tutorial series, you will understand all these concepts in a great detail. Right. So now we have set up our configuration. The next thing is we need to initialize the, uh, we need to initialize, you know, the classes which we have imported. Right. So now we have this initialization portion, which we have this. So we are first initializing our fine point client. You know, you can understand this. There we only need to just provide the API key. And if you just click on that, you can just see this is the constructor, what all fields you have to feed. Right, so I'm right now just passing an API key and just de depending upon the default volume group for the rest of the parameter. The next initialization is for the embedding. This is the model which we are using and I have to give the model name, which we have defined here, you know, and then the API key to this parameter, right? And this is just prior except, which is a standard Python code. We have to just ensure that if something wrong happens, then we have a proper uh, print message through which we can understand which point our code is failed. Initialization is done. 
The next thing is we have to load the PDF because we are almost done with all the stuff, but now we are only left with just ensuring our index is created or not. So for that, you know, I have this code, which actually does the same thing. So let me just copy under this point. So this code, you don't have to worry about the length of this code. So let me just quickly explain. What I'm doing here is I'm just making a connect. We have this PC, you know, and here we are just trying to index, you are trying to get all the indexes, like what all indexes are created. And once that is captured in this existing index, I'm just checking the index which we have configured here, it's created or not. If it is not created, then it is going to create. If it is there, then it is not going to create. It will just give us, okay, this is already existed. So there is no need to create that. So we're going to understand that then we are going to run that because we are going to have a proper messages on prompt through which we can understand. This is how we just make the connection to the existing index because until this point, you know, if index is there, it's not going to create. If it is not there, it's going to create. And now this is the part where we are actually making a connection to our index and that is going to be used to load the data, right? So until this point, we have just made the connection to the piece. The next part is we are going to just check before loading any data, what's the status, right? So until this point, I think if we haven't made any mistake, then we should be able to run the code and see, okay? Oh, I just, so now you can see pine code client initialize, Google embedding model is initialized, checking whether this uh, index is, have, exists or not. So it seems like it is already there, connected to the pine cone. And we can see we already have 2,252 uh, vectors over there, right? So until this point, everything looks good, right? So the next thing which we have to add is loading the PDF file, creating a chunk and creating a embedding. And the last is where we're gonna load, them, right? So again, it's very straightforward if you have, Okay, so at this point, let me just copy this with the loading part. Okay, let me just put it here. So in data loading, if you just see what I'm doing, first I'm just checking the PDF file, which I have set it as a PDF underscore directly exists or not. If not, it just gave us a message and come out from the loop, right? So that's right. Now we are using a directory loader where we are saying, okay, this is my directory in which you have to search for asterisk.pdf. What does it mean? It means that it's a wildcard character, whatever file is ending with PDF, you have to consider that and you have to load that. Right, which class you want to use, you want to use the pi PDF loader. And as I mentioned, you can just click on these classes and you can understand how this code is working. Right, so that's not an issue. <clears throat> show progress, we want to just show the progress. Use multi threading, these are such simple tool uh, parameter. You don't have to worry about that because these are not something which you should be worried about. Now we are just loading all the documents and we can see what exactly loaded by just printing that okay so this is just again a mechanism if there is no document then it will say there is no document to be loaded you know that it is going to give us some information about you know how many documents were loaded splitting what it is doing as i mentioned that we are using this recursive character text splitter where we are feeding in our chunk size in the overlap where we says that okay now you want to split my entire documents where you know the first chunk will have 300 and the next one is going to again have a 300 but it will have a last 50 words from the previous chunk. And then we have this doc chunk created with the help of this text splitter, which is my object. I'm saying a split document, which document, which we have loaded here with this directory loader. And then in this way, my entire PDF file, which you can see here, it's going to be uh, converted into the chunks, right? Now, once we have this chunk created, you know, we have to just put the data into the vector unit. Okay, so let me just put this code and let me just explain what we are doing. Now, we have just created a chunk, you know, and we have to now load this data to the uh, vector DB. So what we are doing, we are using a pinecone vector store from documents, right? So whatever the documents. In this method, we have to feed in the chunk which we have created. Then we have to give an index on which index we want to load the data. This is very important because this is where you're going to give the embedding object which you have created for the Google embedding model during our initialization, this one, right? So you feed in the chunk. You are giving an index name, then you are giving an embedding, and then you have to, again, you have to provide the name, so it's because 
this is the concept of specific to time. Right? Once you do that, you know, it is going to just start loading the data from the chunk to the configured or the requested index, right? These are some print statement and based on which we can just understand. So if I haven't made any mistake and if I run this, because we know we have 2,252 records or the vectors, and now we are going to run this code again with complete and good. Now we can see the progress. So here it is important. We have total 47 pages from all the PDF files which resulted into 295 chunks, basically, depending upon the number of words which we have. Setting up a pine code vector store, so it will just start loading the data. We can check this through the online as well. If you have watched my vector DB tutorial, you know how to do that. Right, so we have 2,252. 2, still, still, okay. So let's see if we look. Now we can see now it just increased to 547. So if you just add 295 to 2252, this is the number which we're going to get. So it means that we are able to load all the PDF files based on the chunk which we have configured and we can play with this chunk size and we can do that, right? Now, that's it from my side for this video. If you have any feedback or suggestion, you can just feel free to put that into the comment section. I would love to do that into my next video. So in the next video, we are going to write, you know, the main logic where we are going to use a line, line chain to retrieve the data which we have stored in this vector database. Then we will combine that in our query to create a proper prompt that will be feed into the elements and that part we are going to build in the next part. So thanks for watching this and if you really like this video please give a thumbs up and don't forget to just click on a notification bell so that whenever the next video is available you will be notified for it. And if you really feel that okay this video can help your friends and guru or colleagues please feel free to share with them and if you haven't subscribed for my channel please subscribe. And as always stay healthy keep learning and new things.